Hello everybody, welcome back to the second video in our tutorial where we're using the actor-based framework Microsoft Orleans to build a distributed banking application in .NET. In this video, we're gonna go into a deeper dive into what it means to be an actor, what an actor framework is, and why we will only use them to build an application of this type. We're also gonna look at some of the specific terminology used by Microsoft Orleans, which will help set us up for future videos. We we'll look at some of the advantages of building an application using actors, as well as mention some of the companies and projects that use the Microsoft Orleans framework. We we'll look at some of the advantages of using an actor framework like Microsoft Orleans, as well as some of the companies and projects that use the framework. If you want to be kept up to date with the latest videos in this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be updated of all the new videos on both Microsoft Orleans and other distributed computing topics. So let's talk a little about what it means to be an actor and what are the core features of an actor. An actor is generally considered to be a self-contained unit of computation that encapsulates state and behavior. What this means is that each individual actor is composed of three main components, identity, behavior, and state. Generally, an actor refers to a single small entity or component of the system we are building. In a banking system, some potential good candidates for actors would be individual ATMs, individual checking accounts, or even an individual bank branch. These are all small entities which have some identity, state, and behavior that inherently belongs to the individual entity or actor. In our example, the identity of our ATM would simply be a numeric ID, string, or UUID that uniquely identifies the individual ATM in our system. This is probably most similar to a primary key in a traditional relational database system. However, in an actor system, we can only access the actor using this identity value. In terms of behavior, this is the different actions that our ATM can take. We might have actions like withdraw cash or get balance, that are generally performed by ATMs. These actions can do many things like running some code, modifying state, or even sending messages to other actors. We will dive into this in more detail later, but each actor can only perform a single action at a time, which really helps to reduce the complexity in a distributed application. Finally, the ATM will likely have some state associated with it that lives as part of the actor. This might be things like the current ATM cash balance or its operating hours. The state is persistent and lives as part of the actor. So when we are performing actions, we have quick and efficient access to the state. These three components all come together to form the full identity and definition of an actor in our system. We mentioned before that actors can only perform one action at a time. The only way actors can take actions and run code is when they receive a message either from another actor in the system or from a client interacting with the actor-based system. Only when an actor finishes processing a message does it begin processing the next message that it receives. A good way of thinking of this is as if there's a message queue sitting in front of our actor with messages to be processed in the queue building up over time. This means that if a single individual actor receives a very large volume of messages, or it takes a long time processing those messages, we may see some backlogging. This is why it's generally important to model our actor-based system on a large number of small actors rather than a small number of large actors. This is because these generally don't need to perform a large amount of concurrent actions. In our case, an ATM is a good choice for an actor because it generally performs one action at a time in real life. We don't have hundreds of thousands of people interacting with the exact same ATM at the exact same time. On the flip side, if we decided to model our whole bank as a single actor, we might start to see some serious issues as the whole bank can only perform a single withdrawal deposit or balance check at the same time. To help visualize this, we can see here that this actor has received the message in blue. When it processes this, the message simply goes away and the actor is ready to process the next message. So say we get another message of blue type, and while the blue type message is still processing, we receive a green message. The green message won't start to be processed until we finish processing the first message in the queue, which is the blue message. And then if we receive a third message to the actor, in this case, the yellow message, that will go on the message queue again 
behind the green message. Once the blue message is finished processing, we'll begin processing the green message and everything will move up. And again, when the green message is finished processing, we'll begin to process the yellow message. Finally, the actual will become free. It will be doing nothing and eventually it will be deactivated to free up resources in our system. Okay, so now that we have a handle on what an actor is, how they perform actions and how they conceptually fit into our system, let's take a look at some specific terminology that is related to Microsoft Orleans. In Orleans, an actor is simply known as a grain. In this picture, we have four grains, two orange grains, which are of the ATM grain type, and two green grains, which are of the checking account grain type. This is analogous to object-oriented programming, where we have objects which have a definition of state and behavior, and then we have specific instances of those objects. It's the same for actors or grains. We have the grain definition, and then we have multiple actual instances of the specific grains of that type. In Orleans, a silo is a server hosting the Orleans runtime. Each silo hosts the execution of a number of grains. Silos are responsible for the likes of grain activation, message routing, state management, and resource management. In this example, our silo is hosting the four grain instances we talked about previously. A silo belongs as part of a cluster, which is essentially just a group of silos which provide our full distributed system. The silos in a cluster all work together to provide the scalable and fault tolerant nature of an actor based Orlean system. A full cluster might have a number of silos, each which has a varying number of grain activations on it. A grain activation is just a grain that has been created and is currently in memory on a specific silo. Some silos might host multiple grain types, while others might host a single grain type. Orleans allows this to be configured based on the specific use case of our application. A final bit of core terminology to understand an Orleans actor system is the idea of virtual actors. Virtual actors or grains help to abstract away the complexities around lifecycle and state manager from a developer. With virtual actors, we don't have to explicitly create or destroy actors. The runtime does this for us. We simply just address the actor or grain we want and the runtime will know if the actor already exists, and if it does so, on which silo the current activation is on. If it doesn't exist, the runtime will create the actor for us. All this will happen in a way that is abstracted away from the client or developer. In this example, we have a silo that has no grains active on it. We now try to call an ATM actor that the system has never seen before. The call will succeed and the runtime will create the actor for us as if it had already existed. Now say we have another grain. This time it was previously called, but has since been deactivated on the system and no longer lives on the single silo in our cluster. When we try to use this actor, the runtime will simply activate the actor on the silo that makes the most sense. In this case, it will be on the single and only silo in our system. Again, this happens without the user needing to know the complexities around whether the actor previously existed, and if so, where did it exist? The final case is if we have an actor that is already active on our silo. When we try to address this actor, the runtime will simply route us to the existing activation on our silo. These all appear to work in the same way to the client, and the complexities happening below the dotted line is completely abstracted away from the developer. The advantage of virtual actors is that it really simplifies the development of our Orleans actor system. We've already talked a little about why using an actor-based model to build our system can be advantageous. Let's dig into this a little bit more to understand exactly how Orleans, or really any actor-based system, achieves these advantages, especially around scalability and fault tolerance. However, before we talk about them, it's important to really highlight one of the key advantages, which is developer productivity and reduced complexity when developing a distributed application. Using an actor model takes away the complications around concurrency that we often have to deal with in a highly concurrent distributed system. Because actors by their nature can only process a single message at a time, we don't have to worry as much about database locks or synchronization code as the runtime takes care of most of the concurrency control for us. Also, by encapsulating behavior and state into isolated actor entities, 
it makes it easier for the developer to reason about exactly what parts of our system are doing at different times. In terms of elastic scalability, Orleans achieves this in a similar manner to many other distributed system architectures. Say, for example, we have a single silo in our system, and that is hosting a number of our grains. All the requests to our cluster are currently being serviced by this single silo, which may lead to resource contention if the number of requests becomes very large. However, if we add some additional hosts or silos to our cluster, grain activations will begin to spread out automatically. The way this works is also fully configurable based on the specific requirements of the application we are building. Now that the request to a cluster can be spread out among all the available silos that support the grain type we are trying to access, reducing the resource contention on each of our silos. The ability to spread out load across our silos is especially effective if our system has a large number of short-lived grains and these can easily be moved around the silos in our cluster to most effectively balance the system load. Orleans is also smart enough to know where the grains are already active and route requests for that specific grain to the silo where it's currently active. This increases system performance as it means the grain doesn't have to go through the full activation process every time it is requested, which might involve slow operations like network calls and disk reads. Orleans achieves fault tolerance in a very similar manner. Again, if we have a single silo and the host running our silo dies, then we effectively have no system. However, as we just saw, if our cluster is running across multiple silos on multiple hosts, Orleans will work to activate grains in a balanced way across all valid silos in our cluster. Now, if one of our silos becomes unavailable, Orleans is able to quickly detect this and route requests for grains that were previously available on the now dead silos to other available silos. Each of these grains will obviously have to be activated on the new silo before it can begin to process messages, which may incur some non-trivial activation time depending on the functionality of our grain. Before we wrap up the video, I just want to take a moment to mention some of the users of the Microsoft Orleans framework. As we mentioned, Orleans is open source and cross-platform and was developed at Microsoft. It's widely used at Microsoft itself to power the likes of Skype, but also a lot of the Azure services that they offer. It's not only used on Microsoft, it's also used in the likes of Visa and Honeywell, as well as being very popular in the gaming industry. It was famously used to power the multiplayer of Halo and is widely used at Riot Games as well. Orleans is not the only actor framework available to use. Another popular framework is the Acker framework, which is both available in .NET and I also believe has a JVM version. So if you're using a Java-based application, then it might be worth looking into Akka. I'll leave a link in the description to Akka, and Akka is used very widely in the industry by the likes of Netflix, PayPal, among other big tech companies. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to start implementing our application in .NET and Orleans. The upcoming videos will be a mixture of theory and implementation. So if you just want to skip the implementation, that's fine. Just look at the theory or vice versa.